Hello! Today we are building this. It's perfect for a little countryside cottage inspired by a couple of real builds that we've sort of mashed together. So let's jump right into it. When I take on a building project, I like to break it down into four phases. Phase one is meta planning. You can think of this as like the big picture. Step one is style. For today's build, we're going to go with something that's reminiscent of like the French countryside. Step two is a type of structure that we want to build. Today we're building a house, specifically something that's more like a cottage. Step three is to find reference images. I'm not good at just picturing something in my head and then spitting it out and making it, so I need a little bit of help, which is what Google is for. Here are the two images we're going to use as the foundation of the cottage that we're going to build. Phase two is deconstruction. We need to break down the reference images into the pieces that we want to replicate. First, we need to decide what is the smallest feature we want to replicate. We're going to use that as our sort of unit of measure to build around, but we'll talk more about that in phase three. For our cottage, the smallest feature I want to make sure to replicate is the chimney and probably these peaked windows. Next, we need to decide on any unusual or focal features that we also want to include. That's going to be the peaked roof, the chimney, these double peaked windows, and this connected shed slash greenhouse thing here on the side. The last step in the deconstruction phase is to break the build down into different units. Looking at our images, we can see we're going to have a bottom floor, a second floor, we're going to want to replicate this back peak that covers both floors and then we're going to have these two um, front peaks and then we're also going to have that little shed greenhouse on the side we're moving on to phase three in-game planning we're finally in minecraft just about ready to start building but we still have to make a few more decisions now remember when we discussed back in phase two what the smallest feature was going to be in this case it was going to be the chimney we have to decide what material we want to use as the chimney because depending on the size of that and how many materials we need to make it that's going to determine the overall dimensions of our build luckily chimneys are pretty easy to replicate a bit of wall will do the trick having your smallest feature only require a one block space uh, will make all the rest of our dimensions much, much easier to figure out. That takes us into our next step, which is figuring out the overall size or the dimension. This is where we go back to those units that we figured out in phase two. Now we need to put numbers to them. Odd numbers are really the way to go if you're not a confident builder. It just divides everything up really nicely. Going back to the units that we determined earlier, let's start with the bottom floor. Keep in mind that the inside of your house or whatever build you're making will be too smaller than on the outside because the corners overlap. So if you look here, you see we go nine across here. But if we look at it from the inside, it's actually only seven blocks of space. So for our bottom floor, we're going to go nine blocks on the short side and 17 on the long side and that does not include the little greenhouse shed thing way over here it's just 17 for the main part of the house and don't forget you also have to think about your height i think four blocks is pretty good for the first floor now let's look at the second floor for the most part the second floor is just the first floor stacked on top of itself with a little bit of change so our measurements are going to be just about the same nine going along the width and then the full length will be 17 and the height i made it a little bit taller at five right now we have a block inside of a game of blocks which is totally fine that's fine if that's where you want to leave it but we're going to go in and add the peaks the back peak is going to be the full height of the house so remember the bottom floor is four blocks high and the second floor is five blocks high so we have a nine block total height and we want the entire back peak to be that big we're going to have this peak centered so if we think about the length of our house which was 17 so drop that down to 16 just in your head you're not actually going to change anything but drop it down to 16 divide that in half that's eight so eight on this side eight on this side that means right here in the middle which is would be nine if you were to count you know one two three four five six seven eight nine or if you count from this side one two three four five six seven eight nine that's going to be your middle go ahead and mark that spot we're going to want some windows get in all that natural light you know and i find that they usually look best when they're one to two blocks from the edge of your house so if we go two blocks in we mark where we want that window i like my windows to be too wide so all right we're going to account for that let's do the same thing on the other side that way it's nice and symmetrical and now we can see how much space we have to play with in the center i don't want the back peak to be flush with the windows so let's give it one more space on each side now let's find that middle point again and okay we can go three out on this side and again remember we want to keep odd numbers because it's just easier to work with so we'll do three out on this side 
To make it a bit more dynamic, we're gonna push it out one from the main block structure of our house. And let's go add in the windows. Considering the dimensions of this back peak, I'm gonna keep it a one block wide window, but I'll put it right here in the center. Maybe two blocks here. Let's do an X window right here, or a cross, I should say. We'll do a cross window right here in the center at the top. And then one more block to frame it all off, and that gets us to the top of the house. Remember, it's nine tall, four on the bottom, five on the top. Let's go back to the front of the house and put our front door in smack in the middle, and then we can put those two peaks on either side. Let's focus on one peak at a time. We know we want it centered in between the front door and the edge of the house. So just like we did with the back peak, let's figure out how much space we have to work with. So from the front door to the edge is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A bit more math here. Nine divides really easily into three, three, and three. So let's say our peak is three wide, and then we can have three going the edge of the peak, and then three on the, out, on the outside, from the edge of the peak to the edge of the house. And let's just stick with the theme of three, and we'll make our peak three high. And for the last unit, the little shed slash greenhouse thing, we don't want it to be flush with the rest of the house, so let's just make it a tiny bit smaller. Let's make it maybe seven wide and six long. And we'll make it, let's say, four high to keep it in line with the first floor of the, the main house. Now that we've figured out our measurements, let's decide where the heck we're gonna build this thing. For our little cottage build, I think a nice bright wooded area like this birch forest is perfect. It's got a few hills, it's got a pig over there in the distance. Uh, yeah, it's got some flowers down here, some roses, some purple flowers back there. Purple's my favorite color, so that makes me really happy. And I think it's a good spot. And the last step before we actually start building is to decide on our materials. Oh, I fell in a hole. We already decided that our smallest feature, the chimney, should be replicated using a wall. And I like to keep it really bright and light. So I've got some white concrete for the main part of the house. I think we'll do the shed in brown concrete. The roof will be with spruce slabs and stairs. Uh, we'll need a little bit of detailing stuff, which we can figure that out a little bit later on in the last phase, but I already know what it is because I've already practiced the build as you saw in the flat world. So I'll just let you know now we're gonna use a little bit of fencing. We're also going to need a bit of full size brick blocks and the brick slabs as well. And of course we need glass panes for our windows. We need a door and I have some glow lichen and some bone meal here, which that's just for decorating at the very end. All right, we are finally in phase four reconstruction. We're actually going to build now. After all that work, we're finally actually going to build something. I really need to quit falling in this hole. Maybe I should close that off. Nah, we'll just leave it. It'll be fine. Let's start laying out the footprint of the house, which we have already done all the math for. Now that we've got the footprint done, we need to build up the framework or the walls. So let's go ahead and do that part next. And that's the bare bones of the bottom floor finish. Because the second floor has the peaked roof on top, we're actually going to skip the second floor for now and do the back peak instead. Let's find the middle first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine should be the middle, should have eight on this side. And we're just gonna use the measurements that we figured out previously and just build from that. When we were figuring out the measurements, we determined that the back peak would be the full height of the house at nine blocks tall. And since it is a peak, we know that the highest point, which will be nine blocks, will be right in the center. So we can go ahead and just drop down on each side by one until we get to the end of the width of the back peak. Using this same logic, we can do the sides of the house as well. So let's find the middle of here because that's going to be the highest point. And we know that's going to be nine. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're just gonna drop down by one on each side until we get to the edge. Now that we've got the highest points figured out on both sides, and because we know we're doing a peaked roof, we've went ahead and dropped it down one block at a time. We now know where the roof line will start. Let's go ahead and fill in this row right here all the way around. Let's tackle those double front peaks. That part, honestly, it makes me the most nervous. It requires the most math. It requires the most thinking, but let's go ahead and tackle it. Figure out where the front door goes, which is gonna be smack in the middle. So we can do that and we don't even have to count. We can just uh, line ourselves up here, right? And there we go. 
front door. We know the peaks start three either side of the front door, including the front door. So one, two, three, then we know the peaks are going to be three wide. There's that hole again. And then there should be three on the other side. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Just like with the back peak, we want to add a bit of dimension. So we're actually going to keep it out one block. So it's not flush with the main wall. And we're not going to have it in line with the roof. We're going to have it up one higher. So it'll be there. It looks kind of weird, but we're getting there. Before we add on the little shed extension, let's slap a roof onto the main structure. We're going to be using spruce slabs and stairs for the roof. So let's start at the highest peak. And that'll be, I think, easiest to kind of work our way down from there. So let's go ahead and put in this first central row, which will be the highest point of our roof and we're going to use a slab to do that. Now we're going to use stairs to walk our way down here, here, and here. And then let's take these both sides all the way across. Now we've got the bulk of the roof done. Let's tackle the roofs of the peaks and let's start with the back peak because um, it's, it's easier than the front peaks. The front peaks you'll see that they don't line up with the top of the roof, but the back peak does. That was a creative decision on my part. I, I wanted the front peaks to be lower than the roof of the house and the back peak to be at the same height. Up to you how you want to do that. I just found it more interesting. So let's tackle the back peak because that's going to be a little bit easier. It's actually straightforward. So we're going to do the same thing here that we did on the sides. We're just moving in a different direction. Instead of going this way, we're going this way and we're just going to build right across until we connect with the main roof. So starting with the slab at the top, let's just go work our way inward there until it connects. Then we'll use stairs the same way. Work our way inward. Now we've connected here and obviously we don't need all of this back here because you know, this is going to be in front of it. So there's no point in having a roof here for the sake of making it easier to build. I have it in there and then I'll just break these blocks later. I'm in creative, so it's really simple for me. The more planning you do before you get into like a survival world, then less materials you have to break afterward. Well, let's go ahead and finish this roof. So in order to make these stairs connect, we need to break this one from the main roof and we need to do one of those little corner pieces. Perfect. And we're just going to do that over and over again. And then after we've done that, we'll break out all these blocks in here that we don't need. All right. It is starting to come together. Look at that beautiful line right there. Oh, it's so satisfying. We do have this gap right here, but we'll come back to fix that in a second. Let's jump back to the front of the house and do the roof for the front peaks. This is basically going to be the exact same process as with the back peak. It's just going to end up looking a little bit different because the top of the peak in the front isn't going to match up with the, the top of the roof. But the process is exactly the same. Put our slab here and just build inward until it connects. Stairs. Fix the corner. Do that on the other side. Now here's where I made a change. I don't like this flat line right here from the, the peak wall to the peak roof. So I'm actually going to change out the stairs for a slab instead and just have it on the top half. It is looking better and better with every block. All right, let's clean up some of those excess blocks from the main roof and we'll fill in these gaps like uh, this, this one right here and like the one that we looked at at the back. All right, now that we've plugged up all of those little holes, we've got one last step to finish up the roof. And it actually works really well with the next step. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend the roof on the edges by one. Because this, this flat surface, eh, it's not really nice to look at, but if we can extend it by one or by two if you want, it just makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. So we're just going to go all the way around the edge and extend everything by a block. Um, in this case, like right here, what we're actually going to do is we're going to take a slab and we're going to go down one more and we're going to do it just like that. But on these pieces here, we'll actually just extend it normally. We need to add one piece right here. There we go. And we're just going to do this all the way around. I decided not to uh, take out these trees that are on the corners. I'll just leave them there. We don't need to take out every tree. You know, deforesting, eh, not, not the best. So we'll, we'll leave some trees. There we go. Didn't that make a big difference? Just that one added detail, which actually moves us into our next step, which is detailing. This is where we go in, we add the door, we add the windows, 
we add that little bit of fence uh, that I talked about way back in the beginning. Right, right now we have a house, but it's not really that fun to look at besides the roof. Once we add the details, we'll like it a lot more. We already figured out the windows for the back when we were doing our measurements. So let's just use those measurements and just pop our windows into place. So there we go, per our measurements earlier, two from the corner, got our window in place. We did a two by two window, one more, and then the back peak. Let's put our windows in for the back peak. We knew we wanted one right in the middle and we're gonna keep this one a narrow one. Now let's go up and we were going to do a cross window right here. Now let's hop to the front. We got a lot more space to work with than we do in the back even though they're they're the same dimensions but because we have this back peak that kind of plays differently. Oh isn't that a nice view our little rose garden? Oh, that, was, that was a good choice on my part. I'm proud of me. Let's make sure our windows are sort of centered around the peaks but I don't want to have just like one big window so maybe we leave this as a wall and we do Maybe a window on either side. Yeah, and that lines it up with this back window too. So that's that's good. We'll do that. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's still pretty flat though. So let's take a second to do something with the door. Let's make the door come out a little bit. Have kind of like a little overhang thing right here. And we'll put a roof on it that matches our main roof. So let's just use the same materials. Be simple and straightforward, I think. Put a roof on it and hmm, let's let's give this some support right here let's actually bring back the brick wall as well let's let's throw a bit of a uh, fence right here yeah that's good and obviously we need to put the door in so let's go grab that see now we don't have just one big flat surface we got something to break it up all right let's finish up the detailing and let's put in something here by the peaks kind of like the same thing we did here let's give it some support structures so let's use the brick again and i know i'm going to want to use the uh brick slab so let's do a wall maybe right here and here and we'll put a slab underneath and then it's kind of like a little u-shaped or v-shaped uh support structure let's see oh you know what else we need we need some windows on the sides i think you don't just want windows on the front and the back well, let's do a window here this wasn't part of my original plan but let's just do it anyway all right we are almost there we just need to add the little shed on the side let's keep it in line with what uh, i had originally designed and we'll put it on this side but we're gonna have to clear out a couple of trees here okay we've cleared out some trees we made a little bit more space we might need to make a bit more i didn't i didn't check first let's go ahead and add in that little shed using the measurements that we came up with earlier so i'm gonna do six from here one two three four five six seven this way so that's one two three four five six seven and then the wall it's the same process as when we did the uh the bottom floor and the peaks where we do the footprint first and then we build up the framework which is like the walls all right we're gonna do a peat roof here too but it's gonna look a little bit different than the main peat roof i want it to be a little bit flatter so that's why we kind of got this odd shape here but it's kind of the same process we're gonna do slabs at the top and then a stair and I don't want to just keep doing stairs so I'm actually going to do a slab to it kind of just extend the bottom half of the stair a little bit yep and then when we get to the end we'll drop down one with a slab just like we did um, over like over here and we'll carry that all the way across and finish off this roof final few details we're going to take some glow lichen and some bone meal and let's throw some glow lichen around it just to because it's a cottage right so like we want to have a sort of overgrown feel sheep sheep watch out for this hole i have fallen in it like three or four times watch out okay let's let's throw in some glow lichen and the last step we're just going to throw in some bone meal just to give it a bit more grass and a bit more color so we're just going to kind of go crazy hopefully some flowers show up there we go Right, and this is way too much uh, grass for me, so I'm going to take some of it out, especially the tall pieces. I don't like to have tall pieces around my structures unless it's supposed to be like an old sort of ruined structure. Uh, so I'm going to take out some of it, and I'm going to take out, or I'm going to take out all of the big grass and some of the little grass. So that way it's a little bit more sparse, because for me that just looks more like a well-kept lawn. So 
I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back with you. And there we go, a pretty simple countryside cozy little cottage with a hole that um, I have not fallen into for the past several minutes, so good on me. Uh, and I am hungry because it is almost 6 p.m., so I'm gonna go have dinner. Thank you for hanging out with me and have a great rest of your day. Bye.